Where we last left our heroes, they entered the town of Wild's Edge, took in its uh, local flavor, seemingly a land without rules, on the edge of the uh, forests that lead into the Fey Wild. They spent some time uh, shopping, looking around for stuff, and they ended up meeting the uh, leader of the town, a elven woman who goes by the name of Dillinger. Seems to have a old connection with Fezziwig, an old member of... Uh, they, they were troop members together in a traveling performance troupe. Uh, she requested that the party assist him where they could after suspecting them of hunting him down for reasons that she didn't quite understand. They also learned that the ballad of the Jester and Asmodeus happened to be a old play that seemed to be a little bit more prophetic than uh, it might have initially intended to be. <clears throat> Seeking assistance in their journey into the Feywild, some sort of uh, guide to find their way through, they came across a uh, mushroom-picking fawn who seemed very, uh, uh, by the name of Barnaby, who seemed capable of at least getting them into the woods and showing them around a little bit on their way to meet uh, somebody known as the Dreamwalker. They also went to the local adventuring guild, which happened to be where uh, the Fey Runners are stationed out of. Nara, <laughs> knowing who uh, happened to be the lead there, uh, walked up and decided to, I guess threaten is the correct word, uh, Mr. Darrington Loxley, who, uh, no surprise, made a very quick escape after blinding Nara and filling the room with smoke. We now rejoin the crew at the guild hall as they decide how they are going to make their way into the Fey Wilds. So you think he's run off yet? Didn't hear stops just staring up at the doorway. Well, well, what? The answer is probably. I just blanked out there for a second. <laughs> the answer is yes. <coughs> Nara wiping her eyes of booze and coughing out smoke. <coughs> what did you do to? I simply asked. If he would track for us. I told him to track for us. And then he left. After throwing alcohol in my eyes. Ah, oh, that bitch. Yes, I'm very cross. Mm. <laughs> she, like, smiles to herself like, I'm gonna murder him. <laughs> Well, that just means that you get to find him later on down the road. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm really excited. I mean, we'll f we'll find him. Mm. Mm, that's concerning. Well, but anyway. That still, still leaves us with the problem of actually finding someone to escort us out there. Uh, Denier, you wanted to go with that fawn, right? Yep. See if he could lead us to this... Um, Apparently, they got a village further in. Could be a good setup point to look further. And if he knows, he was one of the woods, so he might know where this Grabthar is coming or is going from. All right, well, it's possible. Seems like our best shot. Well. If that's the case, I believe he said he was going to the illegal drug store. Don't right. Lie. Illegal drug store. 
It's right across the street. Oh my god, really? Mm -hmm. I just have to walk forever for those. All right, that's good to know. No, it, it says on the front, illegal drug store. Oh, wow. Really mm -hmm. literal. It's refreshing. God, why did we so long to come here? All the other bandits were like, oh, I gotta go to Wild's Edge, dude. It's crazy, but everyone always hypes up a place. You never believe them. All right. It's fucking my kind of town. All right, guess we're going to the illegal drug store. Ooh, goody, 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 goody. <laughs> You guys make your way back out onto the streets. Uh, it's starting to become like early evening by this point. Uh, sky is starting to get a little orange. As you walk down the road, um, Nara, go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. After I do a thing, which is pull up my sheet. 26. Uh, as you're making your way out onto the street, you can still see, uh, the remnants of the, uh, fresh boot prints. Like, you, you look up towards the, uh, window to where Laxley's office was, mm -hmm. and you can just see, like, a linen rope strung out the window. Oh my god. And this... fre fresh boot prints impacted onto the ground that just scatter off into town. Mm. Okay. Nara just, like, gets big puppy eyes and looks at everyone else and goes, Um, do we have time to make a side trip? Really quick. What?! Just, just hunt down Loxley really quick. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it, 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 Nara, Nara. It won't even take that long. No, no. Here's the thing with Loxley. Mm. He has this horrible fate that he's always going to end up on our path. This has happened multiple times. At this point, I think it might be uh, fate itself. So the next time we see him, promise if we don't go for him now, we can't hold you back then. Okay. Oh. Nara, how about I do one? Do you one better? What? How would you like to corner him in a way that he can't get away from you? Yes. <laughs> yep. The next time I dream walk, I'll show you how. Okay. Oh, okay. And with uh, fre fresh new images in her mind of vengeance, uh, you guys make your way down the street. Um and find your way back to the uh, town center where you see, uh, just across from the tavern, the illegal drugstore. It's beaded curtain. Like, that's that's about all it has for doors. Uh, you can... It, it smells of, like, patchouli and incense as you get closer to it. Hmm. Ooh. This looks professional. <laughs> Smell professional. What can I buy here? <clears throat> Illegal drugs, presumably. Do you enter? Yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Yes. Glug, the, glorious drugs. The cool, the cool beads kind of clack against your hand as you uh, peel them apart to walk through them. Uh, the air is thick with the smell of uh, herbaceous incense. Uh, behind the counter, Nara, you see the man that you saw on the back counter, a uh, rather rotund, somewhat balding human male uh, with light brown hair. He's got a thick beard, like just kind of like a, a kind of an Abe Lincoln style Amish beard down his face. He looks at you with his glassy eyes as he takes his eyes, like, from, uh, kind of looking at some mushrooms that Barnaby is showing him. Oh, hey! Uh, Barnaby says as he notices you come in. Uh, the man standing behind the counter. Hey, welcome! 
Would you like to buy some illegal drugs? I would like to buy some illegal drugs. Now I I've would like to buy again. one illegal drug, please. One illegal drug. Okay, ladies, bef ladies before gentlemen. Ladies before gentlemen. Hmm. What is your pleasure? Do you like to hallucinate? Do you like to get sleepy? Do you like to... <laughs> he starts list listing off a series of symptoms that you could possibly be looking for. I oh like to go fast. Hmm. I believe we have the proper crystals for that. <laughs> he starts... He's, he, uh goes over to a side jar with these multicolored glowing crystals. There we go. Pure fey crystal. Pulls one out as it kind of like, it has this bio, or not bioluminescence, it's, it's fucking inorganic. Uh, it has this multi-chromatic luminescent glow to it that kind of shimmers, almost like he's holding an aurora in his hands as he holds this crystal up toward you. Oh. 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 How much is this one? Mm, this one right here is uh, pretty pure quality. You'll uh, have to part with uh, 10 gold. Tink. Okay. She hands over 10 gold. All right. Enjoy your illegal drugs! He yells out. That is loud. Yeah, you gotta, you got, you gotta let him know where you can get the illegal drugs. <laughs> I think the sign that you have out front is probably enough. <laughs> All forms of advertisement are great advertisement. Okay. <laughs> There's no such thing as bad advertisement when you're selling stuff that's illegal. Very true. Thank you very much. You Would you that. like a place to um? Consume it, or is this to go? To go. Very well. Is there anything I should know about my illegal drug? You will not sleep for two days. Oh. Upon taking it. <laughs> okay. Good to know, she says while holding and looking at it. Denier slowly least. looks over at Asimo. No, what about me? What's up? Didn't you say you wanted to uh, wanted to get something? Oh yeah, whatever you can do to really like. Um, I'd like something with no. I mean, how? Do you have anything that's relaxing with very minimal uh, uh come down at the end? Um, with relaxing, it's all come down. Shit, it's been so long, you're right. God, okay, yeah, just give me one of those. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, he uh, starts par He starts parting through some things. Now, are you looking for something to help you sleep, or are you looking for something to just dull everything around you? Sleep, sleep, sleep will take me. All right, all right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. goes through a... Uh, he pulls out a couple of jars. One looks like it's full of... Um, what look to be old dried roots. Another one looks to be full of uh, kind of orangish flowery herbs. Ooh. Either of these would do fine for you. This one lasts a little longer. He points towards the roots. You stick it in the back of your mouth and you just kind of chew. And it'll uh, take you down where you need to go. Meanwhile, this other one you can either mash it up into a fine paste and slather it on your flesh somewheres, or you can uh, crush it into dust and inhale it. Yep. Yes to both? Or... Mm, no, nah, can you make this decision for me? I can't decide. What? She, she <laughs> looks up. She's been staring at the rock the whole time. <laughs> I will take the former. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, these dry roots will run you about five silver apiece. Okay, let me just down. Uh, <laughs> Baker's dozen. All righty then. Uh, he starts counting them out. One, two, three, three. four, 
five, six, five. It's seven. It's 13. It's oh, 13, by the way. Okay. Baker's Dozen's a 13. Gotcha. So, 13 I'm not a baker. Five. I'm an illegal drug salesperson. You can just um, say free drugs. You can just say drugs that are not illegal here. That, that, then, the, the, look, then, you know, okay, people so, don't like to buy as much. Okay, instead of illegal drugs, why not just drugs, exclamation mark. Because illegal makes it sound more edgy, you know, like you... It's like, oh, I shouldn't be buying this, but oh well, when in, uh, when in, in Wild's store, Edge. Don't come here, don't come here, we sell drugs. Nara pats challenging them. Asmo's shoulder with the, like, knowing sage look on her face. It's the name of the store. Ah, uh, but no, I always just want to improve it. But he, thank you very uh, much for these drugs. He put he puts your drugs in a in a small satchel. Here you are. Like a thank small pouch, much. and hands them to you. Thank you very much. See, man, I told you these guys were good. They were good for it. How long have you been here? Cause like I thought I was talking to you this whole time. Barnaby uh, I says. Feel like I, mean, I feel like I've been here my whole life, but. Oh wow, that's longer than I thought. Denier steps up to the counter after a moment. So I've got a I've got a few questions for you, if you don't mind. I yes, assume that my you're... mysterious friend. I assume that you are Sprout. Yes. I am Sprout. You are Sprout, the Dreamwalker. Wait, no. I am Lido. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. He looks at his hands. Yeah, no, I'm human. Barnaby here has told me that you may have some experience dreamwalking. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. He's taken me out into the forest once or twice to meet with the dreamwalker and, uh... Yeah, he's, he's gotten me into the... He's got me into the groove. Why, you looking to, uh... You looking to walk? I, I might get what you need. Color me curious about your method. I've got my own method to walk. How nice, do you do uh, it? Well, uh... With the right chemical inductions, you can uh, find yourself more amicable to it. Uh, I haven't quite done it real successfully, personally, but uh, apparently it's it's all part of the meditation. Yeah, yeah, you, you get in the mindset, and then you let the wave take over, and then all of a sudden you find yourself out there in the other space, the dream space. Hell of a place, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I ain't been much in there too much, but uh, it, it was crazy. I once had a grand adventure with a sugar glider and a dog. It was amazing. Oh. We went through a sewer. We went through. We went to a tavern. We ended up fighting a giant troll. It was great. Sounds nice. Wow, what do you use? Magic. I've learned how to do it without use of uh, extra chemicals. This guy's good. Either that he's making it up. Uh, he, he, he says looking at Barnaby. Barnaby just kind of shrugs. Uh -huh. But... I do have a I do have a specific request for you, my friend. I'm let's just say I'm a sufferer of chronic stress, to say the least. Um, oh, do I have the right things for you? Good, because normally I've been using a, a specific blend of pipeweed to deal with it. <laughs> he says as he's pulling out a big jar of pipeweed, he starts putting it back in. As you mentioned that, <laughs> what uh, what variety do you have? I'm, I've only got a few doses left for myself. Oh. Uh, this is stuff that uh, it, it'll calm me the fuck down. It's pretty good. Uh, Lanning, uh, knowing what Lex does, do I have any idea of like what kind of pipe wheat this is? Or is it the same kind as mine? Or is it different? Go ahead and give me a nature check. With disadvantage because I am exhausted. That is an 11. Uh, 
It smells very similar. It looks very similar, but you're not an expert, so. How much per dose? Hmm. Four silver. Mm. Can knock it down to two silver since your friends of Barnaby here. All right. I'll take ten doses. Call it a deal. This stuff is less illegal. It doesn't sell very much. He just kind of like he just kind of uh, pouches out your doses and just kind of hands it to you. Well, that's all right. And he'll take his extra doses of pipe weed. He'll give a little bit of a smile and a nod. And I suppose I'll see you on the other side then. Eventually. Is that a threat? No. You'd like to dream walk. I like to dream walk. Eventually, oh, right. I, expect, yeah. I expect we'll come across each other. Uh, just watch out for a guy in a, a cloak that's made out of stars. Calls himself Somnium Vagus. He's an alright guy. I'll keep my eyes out for him then. And Denier steps back. Um, Barnaby, I think that we're, if you're willing, we, we'd like to hire you on to take us to your village. Oh, hell yeah, man. I can take you past some of my favorite mushroom picking spots. Do you, do either of you know a guy by the name of, uh, I believe his name is Grabthar, says he's met Arkanos? I've run into him a few times out in the wilds. Crazy old coot, that one. By chance, you know how to, like, if we needed to find him, would you be able to find him or track him down? I mean, anything's possible out there if you've got the right people on your side, I guess. Then your nods a couple times. Shame that boy grabbed the. Oh. Uh, What's well, the shame? He's so old, but, uh, you know, we weren't always that old. You know, gnomes, they's, uh, they's pretty long lived. But, uh, that grabbed the. He, uh, just got really, really old out of nowhere. Just came back to the village one day. Nobody even believed it was him. Just calling himself Grabta. Left the young man, came back old, claiming that he saw the fucking Akinos. Hmm. Is there time dilation in the realm of gods? Are you asking out of game? Yeah. You're not sure. Did I was when say did this how long it had been since he was there? This is about five years ago. Hmm. Ever since then, he's been going out with whoever would uh, fund his expedition, and eventually he just got tired of waiting and started going out on his own. And from what we hear, he just, he's recently left, correct? Yeah, he stopped by earlier. Grabbed a few things. Said he wanted to stay awake. Grabbed a couple of them crystals, actually. Just... Whoop, crystals? Off he goes. Like this? Yeah. Really, now? How many? Hmm. Like five. I will buy more, too. I will not say no. Do I get discount for multiple purchase? If you buy in bulk, certainly. How much is bulk? Uh, let's see. I charged you 10 gold for one, was it? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I can get you a dozen for a hundred. Okay. His eyes kind of like widen. His eyes kind of widen at that. Alrighty then. He goes and I uh, kind of satch. Uh, kind of gets you um, a nice baggie full of twelve crystals. Okay, and she plops her thirteenth in there. Hands him the gold. 
and under her breath says, Okay, so I have 420 gold left. Nice. Just, I don't know why, but that number calls to me. <laughs> Like 69 all over again. I couldn't know. not bring it up. There was no way I could plan that. I know. That's amazing. <laughs> so you you have 420 in the drugstore. <laughs> eh? Hey? You know. <laughs> yeah, Lido just looks at you. Nice. Yes, they they are nice. <laughs> And she pats the little bag. Chink, chink. They kind of jingle around and clink. Do so, I just eat these? Uh, by the no, way? no, no. You, um, <clears throat> you know, what, you you bought enough of them. He pulls, he like he goes beneath the desk and pulls out uh, what looks to be a uh, ornate metal cylinder with a. Uh, bowl at the end of it. It kind of looks like a old opium pipe. Mm. You put the crystal in here and once it's in the reson uh, resonating chamber, it should activate. You inhale through the tube <laughs> and it should give you what you need. Nick, is, oh. this, ca cra is this crack, Nick? Are we doing crack? <laughs> I'm not, no! Not this saying. is fake it's, crystals. It's, yeah, it's, it's fake magic, crystal. Kurt. It's a fake oh! crystal, Kurt. Oh! God, stop We're judging my drugs. illegal fey drugs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you said it's a long pipe? Yeah, it's... How uh, long is the pipe, Nick? Like, eight inches? Okay. She takes the pipe and, like, fixes it into her bun as another hair stick. It seems to fit in. <laughs> Accessories, I like it. Hmm. So, are we ready to go? Not quite. Um, Barnaby, uh, man, what would it take for you to take us back to your village? I'm guessing uh, at your earliest convenience. Hopefully, tomorrow sometime. Well, like. If you wanted to meet somewhere, I could meet you. I was going to head out, like, basically at first light. It's the best time to head into the wilds. All right, well, tell you what, why don't we meet you at the Explorers Guild at uh, first light tomorrow? All right. Hey, now, Lido, can I crash here, dude? Lido just, Lido's just kind of, like, counting money. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, do you need a bed? He kind of like points to another beaded curtain at the side. Yeah. Here you go. He to he tosses him like a little pouch. Sweet. Thanks, man. He goes through the beaded curtain. And... Alright, see you tomorrow morning. Rest well. Good night. And he their turn... Go ahead, Lenny. Oh, he, just said, he waves. Night. Denier turns to the to his companions. Now, where's the wandering weasel? I need to crash so bad right now. Let's go find the weasel. Following okay. the weasel, the weasel, the weasel. I would have picked up one of those crumpled up pieces of paper. I'm assuming that has the general location of it. Uh, you'd think that, but since it got disenchanted, a lot of the uh, notoriety outside of the stuff that is pre-printed on the paper was basically disappeared upon it. Oh. Mm. The location is added magically once he sends them out. Her. Her. In that case, we will we'll go look in the hard way. Looking for... For any signs. Nara uh, turns I... to the guy behind the counter and just says, Do you know the wandering weasel is? Uh, let me 
you roll something for him. Uh oh, where'd my dice go? There it is. Kill down there. Uh, it doesn't ring a bell. Mm. Why don't we ask someone else that's not the governor? Because I don't want nah, to. I'm going to go her. ask someone local who uh, goes around. Aswell's going to pop out and try and use an ability I haven't used in a while, Nick. All right. I'm going to. Where is it? In my character sheet. I'm trying to find it. There's something particular because I'm more of a, a thief like. I know it's not thieves can't, but it's something else similar. Oh, I'm trying to find where it is. Is it a criminal background thing? Yes, criminal con. Yeah, criminal contact. I would like to activate my criminal contact. We'll see if it's possible. You have a reliable and trustworthy contact who acts as your liaison on the network. Blah, 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 blah. I want to see if there's in this in this underhanded town. I pretty much just want to find in a back alley anyone who has information. All right. <clears throat> uh, You're that guy's. <clears throat> that being and Kate. Wandered off again. That being the Be case, right back. go ahead and give me a, um, let's see, for information gathering, I guess just a uh, persuasion check to see. Okay. Natural one. Uh oh. <laughs> ah, fuck, I hit my head on the way out the door. Ah, oh, god damn it. Oh, my head. <laughs> Son of a bitch, that hurt. You 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 wander around. Wow, the nat twenty on the other side of that too. Yeah, don't even get me started. <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, not only do you not have any contacts in this town, but uh, everybody you like shadily try to approach, like you, you're acting shady for next to no reason, and nobody's like ever just like weirded out by you and doesn't really want to talk to you. Oh. It must be the giant welt on my head. All right, we'll head back. All right, no one wants anything to do with me, guys. All right. Well, if there are, when I had my detect magic up, was it was it the doorway specifically that dispelled the magic of the weasel, or of the 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 notes that fly out? Was it the doors specifically that had the anti-magic on them? Uh, no. No, they're, the doors themselves were not disenchanting them. It didn't look like. These things looked like they were, like, taken down out of the sky. Oh. Well, then I will cast Detect Magic and look for a door that is magical. Uh, quite a few of them are warded in one way or another. Okay. Uh... Are there any of these that don't have signs out? Or perhaps have the logo of the Wandering Weasel on? Uh, go ahead and give me a... It, everybody can go ahead and give me a perception check in town. Yeah. Let's go. 12. Six. 17. Bless you, Denier. Uh, Asmo, did you want to make a perception check? Looking around town? I would I would like to make a perception check. I don't know, Nick. I'm just scared of just, clicking just, anything. Just, I, I believe. 13. Okay. okay, 13. That's not bad. That's not the worst one. None it's of the doors bad. in town have the telltale sign of the wandering weasel. Mm. <laughs> Nara just, like, runs all over the town looking at random, like, trees and, like, sides of barrels and anything that she thinks might become a weasel door since it has been confusingly placed in the past. She's like, weasel, weasel, where are you? Yeah, through, through your searching, uh, it doesn't appear to be anywhere in town. It is now dusk. Hmm. All right, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm putting up the tower outside of town. Denier, you kind of like drag your feet as you're just not having any luck here to the closest, emptiest patch of land outside of town. And you pop up your tower. Yep, with the mossy rock, go inside. I allow them inside, make sure that everything's set up. 
and I go right up to the top floor, which is my bedroom. Um, I will take a few minutes. I will ritual cast Find Familiar to resummon Eska, and upon his return, I will grab him, hug him close, and fall into the bed. No. And I'm out. Eska just kind of like flutters uh, out of your sleeve. There you are. Come here, you little fluff ball. And the near collapses on the bed. I got no acting. Yeah, that was just great. That's really sad. He's Eska, Eska, like, wriggles out from under you and just kind of, like, wraps itself around your neck. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, just immediately despawn. There you are. Hug. Poof! Despawn. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> just an ear wakes up with Faye, with Faye dust all over his face. Just, oh, it's no. mad control. Oh, no! What did I do? Oh, my God. Eska's gonna be so hesitant to come back. <laughs> Alright. Anybody else have anything they're going to... I mean, Denier went to sleep. Anybody have anything they wanted to do uh, in the evening before slumber? Try and Slash read that trance. book again. Uh, no, Aswa just wants to go take some root and go to bed. <laughs> Alright. You uh, take out one of these roots. It, it smells like it, it tastes like black licorice, kind of like Jaeger, basically. Oh, excellent! You, I love. Yeah, okay. stick it, stick it into uh. the back of your mouth. Uh, your tongue is the like your cheek and tongue start to feel numb first, and your entire body starts to feel heavy as you like kind of just sink deeper and deeper into your bed. Your body starts to feel like lead, and your eyes slowly close and you fall asleep super hard ah, like like get out style ah, yeah. ah. Oh, Asma looks happily asleep ah, like just falling down a giant hole forever oh my god ah. what was that one part in Thor Ragnarok I was falling for 40 minutes yep <laughs> all right um, now are you going to try to read the book again? Yeah. All right. Intelligence check. I'll do my, I'll, I'll do my best. 18. Oh my God. After all this time, it's finally starting to click. Like some of the pieces are starting to make more sense to you. You're finally starting to get, like, how this guy fucking talks and how he writes and where the points are being connected. It's starting to make more sense to you. Finally. Do I learn anything from my starting to understand? Uh, yes. When it comes to uh, these soul-holding gems, uh, you know that, like, material... Is a uh, is a major component. Like there are some crystals that are better at holding, like holding on to magical essence than others. Okay. Um. And you kind of learn like the difference between some of those materials. For example, like a diamond is better than a sapphire, uh, which is better than quartz, which is better than a rock. Okay. And uh, furthermore, from this point forward, should you happen to try to come across anything that involves uh, the um, sorry, the process of storing magical enhancements within a crystal, you will have an advantage on your intelligence check when it comes to those. The process of storing magical enhancements in a crystal. Yeah, any anything that involves like that that type. Uh, continuing to study this book will give you more information on stole, soul storing itself. Essentially, like you're you're slowly but surely learning the idea of how to create a phylactery. Like that 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 is when you will have mastery of this book, basically. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right, uh, Wolfgang. Anything you wanted to do before slumber? Um, let me see here. Uh, 
if there are more journal entries for the jester, uh, I would read those. Let me open up my document. Uh, what was the last one I gave you? Seven. Journal entry seven. Huh, that's weird. My document isn't opening. Shit. I'll have to give that to you next time, maybe. Like, it's being really weird on me. Hmm? Sorry about that. That is fair enough. So I'll just say that, like, the entries that you read from there on, like, uh, upon uh, upon parting, uh, the, ju the, the journal just meanders, and you don't find any, like, real relevant information in the next couple of entries. Gotcha. All right, you guys all drift off to slumber. Denier, you're you're finally rested. Yeah. Finally. Ooh. Yeah. And you awaken the next morning. Would I wake up about the same time as everybody else or would I wake up ahead of everybody else since I went to bed probably earlier than the others? Uh everybody give me a constitution check, asthma with disadvantage. <laughs> oh. What? For hangover? 11. No, for his Why? medic for his chemically induced slumber. Oh. Ah. I don't know. I didn't need it. 12. Do that. I don't know why I did. I just heard you say it and then I was like, I'm going to do it too. We I'm invigorated. I mean, you you're 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 in a well, did you actually take the crystal? No, I did not. Okay, so yeah, you you would have anyway cuz you would have gone into a trance and done your thing, but Yep. You you wake up just fine. You require less sleep than everybody else in general anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asmo, you still wake up quicker than Denier does, who's just <laughs> sleeping. Uh, Wolfgang, what about you? I didn't take any drugs. Well, I know, but you're still making a constitution <laughs> check just to see who gets up earliest. Ah. Uh, Nara is, of course, just staring at Asmo until he 18. wakes up. Uh, Wolfgang is the first one up. You Damn it. Wolfgang, Wolf, Wolfgang shuffling actually wakes you up, Nara, and then you instantly go to staring at Asmo. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's the morning routine. Well, all right then. Here's we'll just walk down. <laughs> uh, Asmo, once again, you you awaken to Nara just staring at you. <laughs> oh, hello, Nara. How's it going? Good morning. And Denier, you are, are a, a, you are awoken to the uh, feeling of a uh, weasel basically giving you a face bath. All right, all right, all right. I'm up. I'm up. He scoops up Eska and holds him close and moves the chest over the trap door and opens it and starts climbing downstairs. All of you meet back down in the main, uh, I guess, lounge area with the kitchen and all the in the lot. Denier grabs. Uh, he uses his kitchen, and he starts making breakfast. Eska curiously, like wandering from shoulder to arm to shoulder, just watching what you're making. What are you mm -hmm. making? I am using some of the uh, comfortable meals that I purchased. The modest meals. Right. Uh, so, if anybody wants some, I will add to it. I will use up to, you know, four days worth of rations to make sure that everybody has food. Ooh. And it is, it's not trail rations. So, yeah. It would be uh, griddle cakes, bacon, you know, a, a good hearty breakfast. Right. Denier serves up delicious grub. Mm. And everybody feels good. sated. Eska casually chews on some bacon fat. Yeah, even, even Eska gets his, gets a breakfast for him. <laughs> 
And Denier swaps out. He switches his typical cloak for a jacket. Hmm. I switch out the uh, cloak of incognito for the bomber jacket of warming. Oh. Now that nice, it feels nice and toasty. Now that scents are likely um, wafting throughout the tower. From a distant room, you hear, Char meat! And yes. she, like, did not turn away from Asmo, so she probably yelled that full blast into his face. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a big whiff and then yelled. From upstairs, the dinner yells, Yes, breakfast! Come on, come upstairs and get it. Um, she grabs Asmo and shakes him, going, Charmy, 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 Charmy! You were being so loud! <laughs> Did you know you didn't have to be so loud? Yeah. But thank you, Charmy. I'm coming. But Asmo just like, alright, carry me. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Carry me. She's carry gonna me. try and... Get as she's just getting like like John Cena. I'm gonna get on her shoulders. Okay. She's... I'll be like, oh no, okay, I can't he, stop he's, this. He's, assist, he's assisting you. Athletics, athletics with advantage. Okay. Here, Wolfgang, Wolfgang hears 12. all this and looks at Denier like he's trying not to smile. Twenty-three. Uh, and she's the one making just the athletics. For me, you gave her advantage. Just for me. Oh. Uh, ah. you, she's got you over her shoulders just fine, and she's like, her her knees kind of like quaking, kind of missing that belt really bad right now. Gets over to the uh, gets over to the ladder. Uh, Nara, I need you to make another athletics check. This time without disadv without advantage. Five. And kind of slips and drops Asmo down the ladder. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh every rung! Why every rung? Why am I going back up? As Asmo, make a uh, acrobatics check. Okay. Let's see if I get that double jump off with two millimeters left to go. Double jump. You man, you man, like, like as, as, as you're falling like face first down the ladder, you manage to springboard off your hands and land like on your feet in front of the table. You stick the landing. I T pose. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Asmo gets a Asmo as he lands. Just a mountain of eggs just shoved in front of him. Asmo takes them and off to a corner and eats them like a like a feral beast. Why am I so hungry? Uh, you notice that the uh, you you you're you have like feeling back in your limbs, but your mouth is still uh, a little numb. You can mm. barely taste the eggs. As you gremlin away your eggs. <laughs> and they're Nara sloppy eating in the corner. <laughs> Nara, of course, gets a plate of charred meat. Uh, she she sits down in front of the plate of charred meat and like temples her fingers together on the table. And, and like with one big sniff looks up and goes, Charred meat! And then proceeds to stuff all of it in her mouth. Everybody consumes a delicious breakfast. A great way to start the day. So Barnaby's probably going to be waiting for us at the Explorer's Guild in just a little bit. So as soon as everybody's ready, we can head out and I will get rid of the tower. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you guys head back out onto the streets, and uh, just before, like, before dawn, like, uh, I mean, as dawn is approaching, the streets are still kind of, like, lazy and quiet. A lot of the shops, as you walk in, are still kind of closed down. Uh, like as you walk through the bazaar out front 
Nobody has anything set up. All the booths are empty. You see a few people kind of like wandering the streets. But no, nobody's like in a hurry to go anywhere. A couple of like really, really tired looking drunks like kind of meander out of the tavern. Kind of like hold their hands to their heads as they're like looking out like past you guys. You make your way over to the Explorer's Guild, where you do see Barnaby just kind of waiting there. Just kind of staring off into the distance. Top of the morning. Does Barnaby have a last name? No. Nick. Can his last name be Jones? You can You can say that. Don't, 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 don't actually do that. Just, just, just don't even say that. It can be that in your head. I'm just referencing Frisky Dingo, Nick. Say no to me. Never y never yes and be in these situations. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. You don't you don't know you don't know if he has a clan name now. Oh good morning. Oh hey. I kind of forgot why I was standing here. Uh, and then I remembered. It's you. Cause you showed up. You're right. It's us. Sweet. Nara makes a concerned face. Well, before we step into there, is there anything pertinent we should know about the area? Uh, what's apartment? Is there anything dangerous in there? Oh, us? yeah. Lots of things. Such as... Uh, the plants, some of the things that live there, uh, time. Blink. What? What? The Do leather. you mean by time? Yeah, after time, uh, not, not, not after time, but, uh, can you back to time for a sec there and, uh, elaborate on that? Well, like... If things start to like feel weird, like that's the most dangerous place you can be. Cause there's said to be like a monster out there that like eats it. Or a maybe monster it that is it. Time. Yeah. I mean, that's the rumor anyway. Lenny, okay. given my my knowledge of Arkanos, my connection to the Fae, and my connection to Arkanos himself, do I know anything specifically about uh, the Fae Wild or like these kinds of dangers of the Fae Wild? Uh, go ahead and give me knowledge, Arcana, I guess. Could I also do that with twenty seven? Um, yeah, sure. You can, you can also make a knowledge check. Each of you would probably find something different. Three. Uh, unfortunately, Wolfgang, like, while you have fought monsters that have wandered their way out of these woods, what actually exists within them is still very much a mystery. Uh, mostly because every time something pops out and, like, attacks a nearby village or something, there's a new entry to be added. I'll put a bookmark uh, in the newest pages then. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, Denier, uh This is a land where, like, so much magical, like, the area that Arkanos claimed as a safe haven for his people must have taken a spell so powerful that it just affected the entire land around it. So you're guessing that whatever is going on in the Feywild, they're, like, it's probably the equivalent of magical radiation. Like, there is just so much arcane forces that went into Arkanos, like, finding a safe haven for his people from what was going on up north that, uh, it, it could be described as cataclysmic, but... You're not really. You're not entirely sure about all the things that happen in here. You do know that some of the plants are sentient and alive. Uh, you know that there are creatures out there 
Um, like, I mean, even just being around Tiwig, you know that there are essentially guardians in this forest that are meant to protect from outsiders. So this magical radiation, could this be alluded to um, similar to wild magic? Since I have some... Would I be able to kind of conclude that it's basically wild magic in an environmental form? Partly, yes, as all arcane kind of like has its stem from Arcanos. Mm -hmm. And his bequeathment of uh, this wild magic energy into the hands of mortals is very much a direct sort of impact. This is more something that's like kind of chaotic in nature where it's it's unclear exactly what kind of effects this creation had within these lands. Hmm. So I I explained the, the gist of it to the rest of the party about how it's wild magic and it's coming from the creation of Arkanos' homeland. Speaking of, I cast Sending. To whom? Daniel Peaches. All right, what do, you, what do you tell Mr. Peaches? Hey man, just wanted to give you a heads up. We're about to head into the overgrowth and we wanted to ask your permission before we go in so there's no problems going in there. I know what's going on. I wanted to talk to you first. You get a reply back. You just you just see Daniel Peach is sleeping on Maggie's lap, his ear flicks. Uh, he, he just kind of looks around the room for a moment. Oh, man. I haven't been back there in forever. All right. Be careful. If you uh, run into issues, just let me know, I guess. Uh, follow up. Is there anything that we can say or do to notate that we're a friend of yours? Or can they just smell us, smell you on us? You get the, you get an image in your head mm -hmm. of a sigil. It kind of glows green. Mm -hmm. It looks to be a paw with a kind of wreathed outline. Mm -hmm. And each of the little paw pads is a different, uh, is a different shape of leaf. Gagnier gives a smile as he's sent the message. And he turns to the rest of the group. Okay, uh, we have Fleetfoot's blessing to enter these woods. What would happen if we didn't have it? Well, Fleetfoot has guardians inside of the woods. Aswa just makes a face like, Ooh, well, we dodged that bullet. You remember Tiwig. Tiwig has a connection with with the overgrowth. That's what gets dark when you say T-Wig. Hmm. Yeah, I remember T-Wig. So, I don't know if T-Wig has friends out there, but... You know, one to be safe. Yeah. No points to you guys. All right! That's what just kind of hits. Uh, Denier on the shoulder. We get to go out. I've got everything taken care of. Yo, Nara, we're burning daylight. You good to go? Mm hmm. Yep, yep, yep. All, All right. right, let's do it. No one asked Wolfgang. He's always good to go. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Barnaby just kind of like smiles, his glassy-eyed smile, turns to the uh, forest, and you guys start making your way into the overgrowth. And here is where we will take a quick break. Hey guys, Lanny here. If you're liking what you're watching, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button. It really helps me feel the love for this series. And if you want to catch us live, feel free to hit us up on twitch.tv slash Lanny Mondays at 5 o'clock Central Time. Thanks for rolling with me. Now let's get back to the action. 
start walking into the woods uh, as the sun begins to rise. There's a, a thin mist that kind of hangs in the air as, like, the dew on the leaves and grass kind of trickle about. The air it just feels clean as you walk through these woods. Uh, the greens of the leaves around you... Uh, tend not to indicate exactly like how far north you truly are. Uh, everything just feels significantly more lush than you're used to, especially considering you're you're not much further south than uh, you would be in Fallwood Barrow. It's very akin to when you entered uh, kind of Fleetfoot's domain in the Hexwood. Or everything just kind of feels perfectly timeless. So yeah, this is uh, the overgrowth. It gets better as you get further in. Mm. So like the first stop we're going to make is my favorite mushroom picking spot. If you don't mind, I just got to, you know... Gotta do the job, man. Of course. How many times have you done the job? Oh, a lot. Don't go by my favorite spot too often, but I figured, you know, since you guys are new here, it'd be a nice change of pace, and uh, many... you get to so see one of my favorite do you... spots. Do you tell that to everybody? That's what uh, just looks at him. <laughs> I actually don't come out here with people much. No, Aww. fair enough. Uh, he he leads you further into the forest. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any like as there do seem to be like some kind of like foot trails here, like that are more heavily walked as you're still relatively close to Wild's Edge. Um, you wander for about you wander for a few hours as you travel further and further in. Uh, you start to notice. Go ahead and give me perception checks, each of you. Hmm. Nineteen. Sixteen. Ten. Uh, Nara, the thing that you first notice is that uh, some of the local, like, insect population that, like, kind of start catching your eye, they start looking significantly more exotic. There's these butterflies with very shiny wings, and as they land on a tree the wings kind of, like, harden and turn into, like, a bit of a shell. Like, it, it looks like it turns into a beetle that starts kind of crawling on this tree. And it starts to, like, bear. Like, you start to see, like, shavings of wood kind of, like, crawling out the sides of this thing as it starts to uh, wrench its way into the bark. Denier? Uh, mm -hmm. You notice the uh, birds flut uh, fluttering around. Uh, a number of them have wings that kind of start changing color as they're flapping. They look to be kind of like blue jays. As one kind of like flutters overhead, lands in a tree branch, it immediately kind of predator, tur like kind of blends in with the tree as its uh, molt immediately changes to adapt to its surroundings. Wolfgang, you're a uh, you're you're a bit bored kind of like looking around just trying to find anything to uh, keep you occupied when a tree branch or a root raises up out of the ground and kind of catches you foot catches your foot. You stumble for a little bit. It doesn't trip you, but as you look back, the root sinks back into the dirt. And Asmo, as Wolfgang stumbles, you hear a <laughs> kind of a chuckle. That's Where did that come from? Be. What direction? Uh, it, it came from uh, behind. It, it came from just kind of like in the ether around you. Like it kind of like surrounded you. Asmo just holds up his idea. hand. 
Uh, I'm going to put on my goggles of sea invisibility, and I'm also going to cast detect magic. Oh, Connor, you're really quiet. What the fuck happened? I don't know. I know. I'm about to, I'm about to boost you. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage, then. Uh, thirteen. You still don't see where or what made that noise. Hmm. Is there anything oh. that my drow eyes see? Uh, unfortunately, no. Like, I mean, your 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 eyes were fixated on the uh, insects. Yeah. On the bug. Yeah, this thing. Pretty good on stealth check. Dang. They will make an effort to be more vigilant. Yeah, uh, Barnaby, who, like, notices that you guys stopped. What? Got tripped by a tree branch. Oh. Uh, yeah. Could be a... One of them dryads. Could be a nymph. Could be a pixie. Just... How often do they approach the people who enter the woods? I mean, they don't really like to show themselves, but they like playing pranks every now and again. Especially the pixies. They don't usually come out this far, though. Try to stick to their own place. Perhaps. Are we going to where the pixies are? I don't know where you're going, but not me. Fair enough. Barnaby, do you think it would be a, a smart idea if we had, like, a dryad or something traveling with us at this point? Uh, I don't know. Like, that's up to you, bro. Like, I'm just taking you to my favorite mushroom spot. Nice. If you want to, like, hire somebody else, that's, like, cool. <laughs> Denier snaps his fingers as there is a wisp of purple emanating from him, his hands as I summon a joyous dryad with my summon face spirit. What? Oh! oh. This is gonna be... Okay! Okay! A haze of purple just kind of swirls around you. Leaves kind of like flicker in the breeze. Uh, that bug that you saw, Nara, just kind of takes off and starts fluttering away. And the spell casts, but you don't see anything around you. Go ahead and make perception checks. Do I still have advantage? Yes. 23. 20. 19. <clears throat> All right. Uh, as each of you kind of, like, look around, uh, you see behind a big bulking tree, like a, a large rooted tree, um, kind of these li these wispy, leafy strands of hair looking out as it like ducks its head back behind the tree. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Denier gives a little bit of a smile. Hello. I thank you for coming on such short notice. No, no worries. Were, were you the one that called? I did. Huh? We're, we're walking through the... We're walking through the overgrowth. We're trying to find Arkanos, and we thought that it might be of advantageous situations to have a guide. We don't expect you to be seen. If you don't want to be seen... We just, if we need to call upon your expertise, or maybe we think that there might be another dryad, maybe some pixies nearby, and we're just looking for a little bit of a guide from someone who's more specialized in this kind of terrain. Uh, I'm very happy to help. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bashful. <laughs> it's okay. If you don't if you wish to remain unseen, that's perfectly fine. We're here if you want to come out. We're here if you don't want to come out. He gives a kind smile. Kind of clenching her hands by her side, like slowly shuffling out from behind this tree. Uh, this long, leafy, green-haired, mousy, uh, 
fairly short, elfish-looking woman with this um, kind of uh, plant-like skin. Like, the flesh seems to have the texture of leaves. Walks out, her uh, purple eyes kind of darting to the ground, like, slowly darting up to you. If any of you make eye contact with her, they are, they dart back down. Um, I'm, I'm Phil... I'm Philera. I'm Denier. F-E-L-L-E-R-A. And he motions over towards his comrades. This is Wolfgang, Asmo, Nara, and Barnaby. Hello. Pleasure. She starts kind of like rubbing her left arm with her right hand. So is this your first time in the woods? These woods? Absolutely. That's neat. I... Like, once again, I, I apologize for summoning you on short s- such short notice. We didn't want to run afoul of any other fae around here. We were trying to get to the fae wild, so to speak, and we're hoping that you might be of assistance to us to get there. Sure, I, I can help. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to my favorite mushroom spot. Okay. I I don't know where that is. Oh, it's it's by like a pond, just like further up that way. It's great. Got the best mushrooms. Okay, I like mushrooms. She kind of smiles and like shuffles. She uh, walks up to you, Denier, and just kind of like holds like the side of your coat as you guys walk. He'll, he'll accompany her. You're the only thing that's, like, relatively familiar, as you are the one that summoned her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the one that holds the contract. All right. Um, you guys travel on for what feels like a uh, another hour. The uh, uh, day doesn't see... Or another, like, few hours as you travel through these woods. Uh... They get denser as you get further in, and the footfall pattern, like the foot trails, seem to be disappearing more and more. See, I think it should be right through this way if the moon is right. As Barnaby kind of like lifts up a tree branch, which uh, starts to kind of like stray away from his hands the higher he lifts it, kind of like raising up. Thank you. And through the clearing, you see a uh, grassy field with a large lake, or a uh, a decently sized pond at its center. There we go. There are uh, several rocks kind of scattered throughout the field. Uh, it looks like a, a beautiful little glen. All right. Ooh. Yeah, right this way. He kind of like waves you over to the um, uh, edge of the like pond. The mushrooms like to grow around these parts here, just kind of under the under the little rocky bases by the lake here. I'm gonna like pick a few of them. Is that cool? Uh. Yeah, yeah, man, you do you. Right, right. As he starts like sli- as he starts to kind of like slip uh, slip around the pond side. Over over that the over the next little while, uh, previously, Denier would have a talk with his new friend. But of course, when the time ran out for his spell, he would send he would uh, bid her farewell. He'd basically take the time to learn about the, the forest, learn about the Feywild, try to get as much information as he can while trying to be as amiable as he could. But when it's her time to go, he allows her to go unless she chooses to come back on her, of her own volition afterwards. Uh, she starts to open up to you. Uh, go, go ahead and give me a persuasion check here with advantage as you're the one that summoned her. Okay. Uh, that is a 15. She does seem to open up a bit more to you as you uh, travel on. Uh, you almost you almost even kind of get a chuckle out of her at, at a point or two. She's still very nervous around new people. But mm-hmm. um, 
she she teaches you a few things about the wilds, lets you know about like some of the birds that are fluttering around. She says it's been a long, long time since she's uh, been this close to the edge of the overgrowth. So she's she lives further in, basically. Yes. Okay. Um, is given that we've been talking to her for a little bit, once we get closer to like her domain, her section of the force, would I be able to recognize it once we get close enough for it? She gave you some kind of like telltale signs to look for if like other dryads are around. Okay. So you, you would have a uh, nature check with advantage if you were looking for specifically signs of them. Okay. Uh, Good deal. But for the rest of you, at the moment, I do want you to make a perception check. Hmm, okay. 16. Okay. Are you sure you want me to do a perception technique? Yes, technique? perception technique. Pretty high. Perception no jutsu. Oh. Wow. Too, including me or excluding me? Jutsu. Yeah, you too. Like, this, it, it's been a bit. 23. Whoa. Would it be something I still have advantage on? Uh, you just have all the stuff on, right? Not this isn't necessary. Well, actually, yes, it would be. Okay. In that like, case, are, are that you still are you still wearing your goggles too? I would still be wearing my goggles. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a soft twenty. Um. Barnab uh, Barnaby <clears throat> is just kind of like stand like look is like picking some mushrooms at the edge of the water as he looks up at you uh there's something in his eye like just no just like watching you guys as he look as he looks back you can see a look of concern kind of grow on his face and denier you notice these red tendrils crawling out from the rocks that you guys are sitting next to oh, oh shit, shit. denier uh calls out the alarm as he tries to jump away from the tendrils very quickly. All right. Uh, Wolfgang and Denier roll initiative with advantage as uh, these red lashing spiky orbs start to strike out from beneath these rocks. And you start to see these slimy uh, snail faced creatures emanate from with of like from under what you're now realizing are large uh shiny shells and not so much rocks based okay. on what barnaby did was was that like a look of concern as in like he did this on purpose or you did not see his face oh, okay mm -hmm. oh fuck all right 16 Okay, and? Seven. Oh, all of us? Or I thought you just said Wolfgang and Denier. <laughs> Wolfgang and Denier get advantage. Everybody else roll regular. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh. What? <laughs> Is that real? Well, Nara, you snapped right to it. <laughs> she was not right. feeling. She was not feeling that butterfly situation. Mark down here. Asmo got a seven man. Asmo, you're just not ready for like any of this. He's still no. getting recovery. He's still recovering from the uh, the roots that he took before bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. As these snails uh, bear their barbs toward you, Nara, you're first up. Um. Probably gonna. Ooh, where are they? Sorry, moving my map around. So they're all around us, eh? Yep. I'm gonna go for blue snail first, and we're just gonna do Tango Muerte. As a twelve to hit, that is going to miss. Oh. As you. As you uh, as you throw out Tango Muerte, the uh, like the the Icarus spongy neck that you're aiming for just kind of 
uh, kind of preternaturally weaves backwards away from it. Ugh. Uh, and then she'll go for one more go, since that's that can count as a bonus action, right? Yep. It's been a minute since we've been combat. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 24! Now that will hit. Ooh. That's it will. Nice. Beep. Oh. Uh, eight slashing, that's... four necrotic. Uh, no, uh, well, se uh, seven, uh, seven slashing, two necrotic. The, it's trying to count for the crit on the other end of that. Oopie. So Just kidding. Yeah, nine points of damage. Still solid. And that was the blue one? Yeah. All right. Uh, would you like to move it all, or will that end your turn? Hmm. I might move slightly further in. Boop. All right. Because she a little squishy. <laughs> Denier, you're up. Do I see green snail? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. You you kind of like as you glanced around, you kind of got to look at all of them. Okay, cool. I point at uh, green snail. Uh, green snail needs to make a dexterity save DC 17. All right. As you cast a spell on the snail, you can see its shell kind of glimmer. Get some. That's a 14 and 18. It makes it save. Uh, do If the snail succeeds in a saving throw against a spell or spell attack, misses it, an additional effect might occur. Rolling a d6. You see, uh, as the shell begins to illuminate... Arcane forces begin to ripple through the air. All four of you need to make a constitution save. Oh. Ooh. Okay. 18. 17. All right. Natural oh 20. my god. There you go. Mm. Eight. Yeah. All right. Um, Denier, what level of spell was that that you cast? Six. That was a sixth level spell? Yep. I'm so sorry. I was going for a show of force. Oh. Yep. Uh, oh. Wolfgang, you take 32 points of force damage. <gasps> as the arcane forces ripple through, everybody else just kind of braces themselves um, and takes half as much. So 17. Or, sorry, 16. Oh. These things Ow. are... Don't forget the temporary hit points. Yep, yeah. these these yeah. things uh, you can you can tell are kind of keen on facing down magic wielders. Uh, Denier calls out, they're resistant to magic! I didn't he... realize that! Yeah, Wolf, yeah, you, you, you feel forced, like, just kind of shuddering you to the bone. He holds. That's all he can do right now. All right, Wolfgang, you're up. Uh, all right. Well, I am going to... Sort of, is this difficult terrain inside the water? Yes. It is, uh, the further, uh, the further in you go, like, where the snail is right now would be about chest deep. Ah, nuts. Uh, all right, then. I'm gonna see if I can angle myself around back of this one. Sure can. I'm over here now. All right. Um, um, they do have reach, and you just left red space, so it is going to take a swipe at you with its tentacle. Sam, I'm a beach. Uh, 14 to hit probably misses, though. That misses, yes. All right. Two. All right. <clears throat> Seems to piss me off. Ha! <laughs> I'm, I'm going to summon Crescendo, and I am going to give him the good old bread and butter. Uh, gonna crescendo. 
crescendo uh, once on this one. And I'm facing down. Uh, oh. 28 hit. 28 does, in fact, hit. Oh, good. Beautiful. Uh, 11 slashing damage. Eldritch Smite. Pouring a spell slot into that. Go for it. That is going to be an additional 68 radiant damage. Oh, 6 D8. Wait, no, that's, that's force damage, actually. 6 D8 force damage? Correct. All right, go for it. Good God. Uh, hitting it for an additional 26 force damage. All right. With that, its shell begins to, like, kind of crack and shut. Uh, is that considered a spell, or is that just a spell like a That is... That is just a spell-like effect. It just adds damage onto my attack. It is All not right. a spell attack. Its shell absolutely sunders attack. from this effect. Uh, just absolutely cracks and shatters. It lets out a kind of a hissing, high-pitched screech that's barely audible. Just that... Yeah, maybe I should have fucking thought about that. And I crescendo him again. <laughs> Thirsting blade. Uh, 25 to hit. That also hits. For an additional 7 slashing. And, and... With that, and with that, you basically, like, swing over it and just take off its head as the tentacles kind of lob about. Just violently. Don't cast spells directly on them. They can reflect it back at you. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, bonus action Gunslinger to fire off Requiem at uh, Red Boy over here. Beautiful. All right. Nara pouts because Wolfgang got to cut its head off first. That's a soft 20. Soft 20 hits. Or 12 piercing damage. Holy shit. All right. And uh, Requiem's bullet just... <laughs> right into the fleshy, juicy snail meat of its mm. snail chest. It's 12 points and of damage. And that'll be my turn. All right. Uh, it is now Red Boy's turn as it <laughs> ekes forward. Nara! Actually, no! Not, no, Nara! not that I don't like forward. it! Uh, da, 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 da. It is going to it's use its t use its flail face. Oh no, uh, Magikarp could do that. Yeah, it's gonna flail its face. Flail now makes as many Woo! flail tentacle it's attacks as it has flail tentacles. Okay, uh, with all four of its tentacles on you, Asmo. Four Actually, attacks. No, two, uh, uh, four attacks. Two on Asmo. Two on Nara. Huh, okay. Uh, Asmo to hit the first one is a 14, so that's definitely nope. a miss. Second one is a 19 to hit. I am going uh, to use my defensive duelist to block that. All right, so the second one's blocked. Yeah. Nara, Nara first attack is a 14 to hit. Believe that matches. Then that is, in fact, a hit all. Which oh. deals six points of bludgeoning damage. Gosh, Dingles. And the second one is a 17 to hit. So that yeah, definitely, definitely hits. hits. Uh, this one is five points of damage. Okay. Ho, 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 owie. All right. You know, you, you, it's tentacles like a flail. Like a... Like, like a... Like some flail. Sort of, like <laughs> some sort of morning slug. Ew. All right, Denier, this one's just going to... Uh, the the green guy is going to use all of its flails on you as it, like, shudders through the water. The water ripples violently around it as it starts cascading its flails at you. I'm uh, shielding. All right, so what's your AC with shield? 18. I will... 18? All right, 16 mm -hmm. misses. 10 definitely misses. <laughs> 8 sure as fuck misses. Ooh. And the last one just kind of cascades off of your, like, arcane shield. It just kind of, like, splat, splat, splat. 
uh, none of them seem to break through. As the uh, water just sort of like ripples around it. Asmo, you're up. Okay, here we go. All right, now the red one's engaged with me. The red right, one is so currently engaged with you, yeah. Okay, I'd like to switch over to my spear form. I have not used this yet for a while. All right, you you so, switch to spear. 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 Do I have to say it's traditional word, or do I just say it in English? The ultimate. You don't. You don't. <laughs> You're fine. Spear. 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 All right, spear. so now I got the. Spear, I got spear, the. Spear. It's, it's it's called the stinger, right? Mm-hmm. All right, now I have Chimera Stinger. So now Asmo's going to immediately, with his first attack, give him one of those. 20. No, wait, 19. 17. Uh, 17 hits. Beautiful. 8 plus 5. All right, as you plunge the uh, scorpion tail-looking spearhead into it, it, it rides back, but it doesn't seem to be taking much from the poison. Okay. Okay, right. so Asmo's well just... I don't want to switch form because it'll take him a... Uh, it's a it's, it's, you said it can change forms as a bonus action, right? Yes. Yeah, bonus action is to change forms. All right, I don't want to use, waste one of my attacks. So Asmo is just going to stick with the spear for form for this one. He's going to swing two more times. Go for it. All right, uh, uh, so Asmo <laughs> goes in there with the singer. <laughs> I don't, it's fine, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> 16! 16 matches, that hits. Oh my god. Woo. Lock, 7. Piercing, 5 poison. Alright, 20. Do, 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 do. Yep, once do, again, do, the do, poison do. doesn't seem to do much as it just kind of courses through its veins, but these puncture wounds are definitely doing a number on it as its head writhes and the tentacles kind of like shudder in, looking ready to strike back at you. Yeah, come on, attack me! I'll send you back to your mummy prettier than you showed up here! Another one, 24. Oh. 24 hits. Six plus two. All right. It's it not works. look. It's not looking so hot. I place two cards face down, ending my turn. Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, the water inside the pond continues to ripple. <sighs> Nara, you're up. Hmm. She's gonna summon Whisper. Summon in the Whisper Cat. Yeah. From out, uh, from out of your shadow, the kitty cat ripples. She points at Red Shell. Kill it. It it goes down on its it goes down on its front paws, ready to pounce. All right, what's your move? Um. Is Whisper a bonus action or an action? I'm pretty sure it's a. It action. takes up. Oh, uh, we'll check that. Should da -da -da -da. be like one of the first words of the description. Here, let's just put that in the chat for you. Gain the ability to call forth creature to harass your foes as a bonus action. Okay, so yeah, that's a bonus action. So you can still and... use your action to manipulate uh, Tango Muerte for an attack if you want. Yeah, let's do that business. Bink. As it flies 21. back to your hand and you send it back out, 21 definitely hits. <laughs> Ten damage. Mm. Nine right, slashing, is, one necrotic. This thing is not looking very good at all. Uh, Whisper is now going to attack as it leaps forward toward the betentacled snail. Nat 20 on Whisper's Ooh. lunge. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, Whisper pounces on the creature and basically just tears at it. Let me roll its damage. <laughs> and double that. It does way more than enough as Whisper just kind of like rips the head off and starts <sighs> like chewing on it and like sucking down the tentacles like it's, you know, eating a live octopus. <laughs> oh, good kitty. <laughs> <laughs> just, just chewing on it. Uh, Denier, you are up. Unless Nara would like to move. Uh, she's probably gonna move back a little bit. She's gonna go like, mm, maybe, you know, there. Yeah, oh yeah, yep, perfect. Keeping right. an eye on the ripples, Denier knows that he can't 
cast spells that specifically target the beast. So instead, he's going to dig into his pocket and he's going to pull out some change. Denier Ooh. cast payday. Denier cast payday. How many uh, how many chunks of tokens are there? I'm going to use ten, and all ten are going at this boy. All right. I, so one one mm -hmm. group of ten coins. Uh, let's go two groups of five on opposite sides of them. Ooh. All right, let me. Aha. I love how you actually got tokens for me. This is amazing. Oh my god, Here. I and couldn't not. Graphic. All right, so the coins fly out to do their damage. Five uh, five coins each group. Yep. <laughs> uh, if at all possible, I specifically want them to attack the fleshy bit and leave that shell alone. If that thing can bounce magic, I can make use of that. Unfortunately, you uh, don't really have a say in the matter. It's just whether your spell misses. Fair enough. Well, the the red one, the shell is intact, right? Uh, the shell is still currently intact on the red one, yes. Yeah. Kitty's just eating the insides. Yep. All right. C currently, attack currently nomming through it. Oh, yeah. Attack number one. 22. That hits. Okie doke. That is five magical bludgeoning damage. Attack number two. 13. That misses. Uh, however, since these aren't specifically spells, they don't each proc its ability. So. Mm -hmm. Number three. 15. Misses. 16. Hits. Six damage. That's one, two, three, four. Number five is a 19. That hits. Five damage. Number six is an 11. That's a miss. Seven is a nat one. That's seven. Eight is a 10. Nine is a 26. That hits. Eight damage. And 10 is a 27. That also which hits. Which is seven damage. All right. Uh, the, co the coin's like, plat, 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 plat. Like shoot through its flesh, which try to like it looks like it tries to like congeal back together, but the amount of them they're just flying around. One of them pings off its shell, which kind of glimmers. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna be an asshole and make that proc its effect. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> that is all that I can do, and I am keeping an eye on it and that ripple because I don't trust that ripple. All right. Uh, Wolfgang, you're up. All right. Coming back. Yeah. Moving down 30 feet. Can you get up in this grill? Second verse, same as the first, all coming to a crescendo. <laughs> um, I get it. Uh, only a 29 to hit. 29 will, in fact, hit. For 11 slashing damage. Not blowing a smite on this. All right. Uh, I'll fucking do it again. I'll fucking uh, do it again. Twenty to hit. He fucking does it again. Or an additional seven slashing damage. All right. Uh, uh, bonus action, gunslinger. Gonna pump another round into him. This thing is looking very weary at the moment. It's just kind of like sputtering and bleeding into the water. Go ahead. Uh, that's gonna be a 27 to hit with Requiem. That hits. For 12 piercing damage. Alright. Uh, this thing's like barely hanging on to a fucking thread right now. As we see the ripples in the water. As this thing starts getting dragged down into the water. Oh, oh that can be good. Uh oh. And emerging from. Its spot, dangling in its mouth, the tentacles of the flail snail, comes this large, rubbery-skinned, uh, green, rubbery-skinned creature with a toothy maw and oh, no. waving tentacles. <laughs> Once I make it grow. <laughs> yes! Uh <laughs> it, it slurps down the tentacles of the snail as its uh, tricloptic uh, pod of an eye atop its head scans the area and sees you lot standing above yet more dead snails. 
Um, oh no, that's not good. <laughs> I've ever heard of these things before. Fuck, that's a big ass thing. Nature with, uh, given your previous check, disadvantage. Have Nature I ever killed something like this before? Nine. Nara, also nature with disadvantage. Nineteen! I have uh, killed it before. <laughs> you, you have not killed something like this before. Oh, well, I came across it. I'm sorry. Uh, but you are aware of things like this. In, in your travels around the world, sometimes you've had to... Uh, uh, you've, you've had companions that have had to cut through the overgrowth when they didn't want to travel through the Underdark to get to where they wanted to go. Uh, say they needed to get somewhere in the east rather than the west. It was a lot easier to travel through the woods. They've come across creatures like this. Uh, the only word that could properly describe it as they are... You live with a very uh, uncreative group. frog Hemoth. <laughs> frog Hemoth. Okay. Of course. <laughs> she just it's... points and goes, frog Hemoth. It lets out a bellowing... <laughs> roar uh, as it instantly reaches out towards the nearest creature, which in this case would be you, Wolfgang. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, it lashes forth with two tentacles. That would be a 17 to hit. That hits. Alright. Uh, and that is going to do... 12 points of damage. Okay. And the second tentacle is a 15 to hit. That misses. And as it kind of like drags you forward with its tentacle, its big mouthy maw starts to reach down over your head. Oh no. Uh, what level is this creature? Uh, you don't know. <laughs> it, it, okay. It uh, leans forward to bite down on you with a 15 to hit. That misses. And you duck just out of the way as its mouth. Oh, oh, fuck. But as it opens its mouth back up, it fires out. Oh, wait, no. Wait, no. Huh? That's part of its part of its, part of its multi attack. Uh, it fires out its tongue, this time towards Denier. I'm going to try to shield. All right. Uh, not so much. Go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Okie doke. That is a 17. That just doesn't make it. You are pulled uh. into an unoccupied space within five feet of the frog hemoth. And now it gets to make a bite attack as a bonus action against you. 18 HP to my shield. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. He hits me. And you take... Roll these out. 21 points of piercing damage. Oh. Arcane Ward is still up. And you are currently swallowed. Oh no! Oh fuck. What? You are blinded, restrained. Uh, you do have, you do, however, have uh, total cover from any additional attacks. Wait, 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 wait. The, the frog ate him? The frog just ate Denier, yes. Denier is now inside the frog. Well, that makes my life way harder. God. Okay. Okay. He can still make actions within the frog's belly. They're just dead. Like, a definite disadvantage. Oh, I will simply ask this. Can I speak? I am restrained, but can I still speak? I mean, it'll sound like... <laughs> so. Okay. Do what you can. Uh, th 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 Asmo, you're up. That frog just ate Denier. <laughs> Asmo? Uh oh. Sorry, Top. sorry, but I am back. Sorry, there I pulled my dog out of my room. I'm back. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Greg, uh, the fr Greg the was like scratching at the door. No worries. The frog just ate Denier. What? No! Do? I heard it. Okay. <laughs> 
So, uh, okay, so Asmo is gonna be like, all right, you there? You there, show me some signs of life, you there? Just a hand on the stomach, I don't know. <laughs> This is a this is a very large creature about the size of an elephant slowly trotting out of the water. No, oh, uh, no, you go back in there, asshole. Uh, oh, that this. reminds me, Denier, constant, uh, I, uh, concentration check on your coins. Technically speaking, I did not take damage. My arcane ward absorbed it all. Wow. Fair enough. Hell yeah. Ooh. You, you, he Hell literally yeah. he literally took you like a Tylenol. Just your your arcane ward just like slowly oh. oozing with slime. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Asmo, you're up. Okay, so Asmo just got the he's not changing the spear for him. Alright, back. Back. Now the spear can hit from ten feet away, correct? Uh it I believe it has reach. Yes, I believe the stinger has reach. Yes, then yes, it, it can hit from 10 feet. Okay, because if that's or the it, case... Yeah, yeah, it can hit from exactly like one space away. Wait, so yeah, you have you, uh, you, you can hit from there. So it's right there, move 10, so now another... Ooh. Okay, no way right there. All right, Asmo. Okay. Sorry, I'm not, not normally this strategic. So Asmo... You hear, you feel Asmo kind of like right behind you, Wolfgang. He's like, wait, no, I get a better idea. And Asmo runs over to the side to try and come at it from another angle. And Asmo pulls out the stinger and stabs into the mighty beast with a 27. Uh, you would technically have to be there. Because okay, you, can, you. you can poke through a five foot range. Gotcha. All right, thank 20, you for the clarification. Uh, 27 hits. 27 hits, Ow. boom. 11 plus one. Uh, it kind of riles, it, it, it writhes from the spear and its side, and the poison does seem to leave an effect on it. Okay. Asmo's gonna go for another hit. A second stinger. 14? 14 hits? Hey. Ooh. Alrighty. <laughs> it... 7 plus 1. 8. Alrighty, and... One more asshole well, just stab, stab, stab. 17, stab. Hits. Just keep stabbing. 11 plus two. 13 points of damage. Nice, nice, nice. Come on, you hefty fat bastard. I'll give you something you'll never forget. All right. Um, Wolfga or uh, Nara, you're up. So, tell me, Nick. Can I cast Polymorph on this creature without affecting Denier? You can certainly try. I'm concerned about that phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna give it a whirl. See what right. happens, I guess. She's gonna she's gonna try and polymorph it. What are you trying to turn it into? Just a normal ass frog. Okay. Um, normal ass frog. <laughs> so the rules of polymorph are: it will turn into this animal until it takes enough damage, and then it will revert back into its normal form. You are you are yep. aware of that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it needs to make. So uh, my my hope save? is that I'm sorry. What? I'm just trying to remember what kind of save polymorph is. Wisdom save, okay. Oh, there, yeah, sorry. And what, what is your uh, save DC? It should be on your spell sheet. Save DC. Oh, boy. Where am I looking? Uh, it should be in the upper corner, like... Here, I, I, I can pull it up. Thank you. Oh, 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 spell save DC is uh, 16. Okay. Sorry, uh, I was looking at the it front failed. page, not the... So you, so you start to see it kind of like shimmer just as it starts to like kind of gag you see this bulge of denier just out of its, out of the front of its mouth as it begins to shrink it worked it is now a small frog and then and then Nara looks at Whispercat and then looks at the frog. It smells really big and goes, kill it. 
Whisper Cat seems very preoccupied. Uh, the the um the way Whisper works is it will only attack one target that you choose when summoning it. So it's still just eating. Oh, I thought the... it would. I thought it would shift to whatever target. We did that in the past. If you would like to, I can. But I will say, as soon as this thing takes damage, it's turning back into a giant frog without having taken then like. Any I'm damage. gonna let Whisper continue its meal. Okay. <laughs> Is it try does that sound like it's trying to say things? It sounds like a frog croaking. Okay, I mean, never my, mind. My, my poor attempt at it anyway. No, it's just curious. Let's see. What is the time limit? Concentration up to an hour. Okay, so yeah. Um It's just a frog now. <laughs> yeah. Should we um just leave, leave it alone? Yeah, let's uh it's, it's, it's time to go now. We have it's about a silly place. an are hour. Doing, are we doing anything with these flail-like snails? What? I, I don't even know what these are. Uh, uh, Nara looks around and looks for Barnaby. Barnaby is actually standing by one of the snails, just kind of collecting some of the ooze from it. This stuff's really good for the right buyer. Oh, hey. Uh, hi. Inside them. Go for it. One second, I'll be right back. Sorry, I gotta go quiet for a few. They're hammering. Uh, that insight's gonna be a 12. I'm also gonna insight, actually. Go ahead. I'm trying to see. I, I saw his face before. 17. That. I'm trying to see if, if. Yeah, if he's being sneaky and involved or something. Yeah, if he if he was just going to let us let us bite it. He doesn't look like he was going to let you bite it, but he he is aware that these creatures exist. He did not expect to find them here is what you're kind of getting. Got it. All right. Kind of odd to oh. find them out this way, though. What it's... makes it odd? Well, I mean, he, he points over towards the water where the frog is now just kind of swimming up and trying to, like, <laughs> climb up. Denier's pant leg. Those things like to eat them, and I don't know what would have driven them out this way. Normally, they're further back in. Back towards the caves. So there's something that's upsetting the local fauna. I guess. Not Doesn't good. Sound great. Uh, could yeah. I could I pick up some of the shattered uh, pieces of the shell? The, the oh yeah, absolutely. Shell? Anybody who wants to uh, raid these things, go ahead and give me a survival check. I'm gonna All do right. it too. I would like to. I'm going to oh. set the frog a little bit a ways away. If I can, <laughs> wait, I will have wait, to wait, wait, and very no. gently scoop up the frog and just uh, away. Handle animal. Okay. 16. Okay, right, fine. You, you, you gently pick up the frog. You hold it up. You look at it. It just, like, looks at you. It's it's breathing rapidly. And you yeet it into the, into the center of the lake. <laughs> You're lucky, because Nara was about to do the same thing and not nearly as nice. Uh, that's an 11 on um, my survival. Yeah, pick, pick, picking through the uh, shards of the shell, uh, you're you're able to get like a few pieces that seem to kind of like still glimmer with magical energy. I'd say maybe a um, uh, quarter of a pound, like actually no, probably about a pound's worth of the things flail like shattered shell. shell. Yeah, flail snail shell. Oh, shards. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's 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 for Wolfgang. Oh, Nara, oh sorry. You, Nara, with yours, you get about. Um, Two vials worth of snail but... ichor. Okay. One uh, point off and I get snail ichor. <laughs> to be fair, you did just hear Barnaby say that this stuff could be worth some money. True. Uh, Denier, you also collect uh, like about two vials of snail ichor, but you also managed to get one of the uh, bar you also managed to get a whole barb from one of its tentacles. You uh, you managed to pick up a 
salvageable tentacle barb. Nice. And I suppose we can't just straight up put the entire like shell and all inside of the shells. I assume are way too big for the bag of holding. Super heavy. <laughs> yeah, the sh the shell the shells are massive. Like the sh like I, the shattered shards that Wolfgang has are. Uh, pretty yeah, easy I mean, Denier, you got you got your tower. Can you like put them in the tower and then disappear the tower and they're just in there? I mean, I don't know if we have enough space to summon it in here. This is a dense forest. As he says, the... They, they seem to break easily on contact well, with physical force. Well, I you can... say that, but you're also wielding a god-tier weapon. So... Easily for me. I, I look at the sky and look at you, Lanny. Easily for me. <laughs> I, nod, I nod back down at you. <laughs> Those shards might be useful, um, especially with my staff. He collects his coins. And he's wiping the, the frog saliva off of his uh off of his arcane ward yeah i'm i i'm gonna have to figure out something because i i did not like getting eaten it's that, that you weren't eaten for long yeah but i still got eaten i guess well you're alive and you're unhurt maybe a little gooey Lenny, I cast press digitation on myself twice. Once to clean myself off, and then the second one to make my clothing obscenely. Uh, Wait, obscenely is that is that the inner thing. is that the inner slime or the outer slime? Oh, oh. god! Oh. Slime. oh. Uh, I believe the answer is yes. <laughs> I don't have any use for the inner slime. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use prestidigitation to make my jacket very, very spicy to the taste, up to the point of doing damage. I don't think that's possible. You can make it taste spicy and unpalatable, but that's not necessarily going to stop it. It will be uncomfortable for the creature, though. I know, but it's making Denier feel better right now and that's what matters <laughs> all right you'll be spicy on the way in and am, on the way out i am yeah, flavoring you... myself for the creature there you <laughs> go great just wait these things like spice oh, oh my god all right um so yeah yeah you press the digitation yourself and now you taste you're you're a spicy kitty spicy boy if, if we haven't collected the other flail snail shell i could probably go over there and see what i could do about maybe as you as you Not wander quite. over as you wander over to the other flail snail which whispers just kind of like lounging on the back of it like on the back of its shell just slowly chewing at the head it just kind of like looks at you bristles up its fur I, I cast light and i shine it in his face fuck off <laughs> do that Fucking cat! Hey. It, 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 as as the as 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 you shine the light, it it like zips to the nearest shadow, to the shadow of the tree beside Nara, and then into Nara's shadow. Looks over at you, or looks over at you, Wolfgang. You see the claw reach out from Nara's shadow. Uh, that's a sixteen to hit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You take you take uh, three points of slashing damage, as the cat just <laughs> as the cat just kind of like swipes at your leg, and then disappears into okay. Nara's and then disappears into Nara's shadow. I'll kill that fucking cat. Hey, don't shine a light at its eyes, maybe, and then you won't have to worry about it. Hmm? Yeah, I fucking think about maybe who's the boss right. around here. Go ahead and give me a survival check, there, Wolfgang. All right, I'm going to attempt to carefully try and maybe like quarter the shell. I'm you, not, you just whatever, want some nice whatever. salvageable pieces of this shell's yeah. anti magic property. Yeah. All right, here I go. Survival check. Herp. Twenty. Ah, oh, yeah. You you get a uh, a few decently sized chunks of this thing. Do you think might be able to be molded into something, or at the very least, uh, sold to craftsmen in a very usable condition? 
So just say, uh, flail snail shell. Excellent. Falcon, good job, Mr. Connolly. Can I check the other shell as well? The other shell is like shattered to pieces. Yeah, I already oh. got that one covered. Yeah, he, so. he, he got oh, as I many just, I meant the, uh, because I checked one, but I don't think I checked the other. Oh, yeah, you can, tech, you can check the one that Whisper was eating at now. Go ahead and give me a survival check there, but the shell has been salvaged. Yes. Oh. Just kidding. Uh, wh it's a whisper, one. whisper did a number on this thing. Like, it, it, it ate most of the face, all of the tentacles have been eaten. Uh, a good chunk of the body and snail meat is gone. Uh, like, you know, you know how cats eat. Just everything she, looks like just kind of ripped apart. She squooshes up her lips and looks down at her shadow and goes, Whisper! Oh. The shadow just, the shadow kind of like sulks under you. And then she gets down, she gets really close down to the ground and goes, But good job about Wolfgang. The paw, the paw, like, reaches up out of the shadow and just kind of, like, like gives you, like, a, a few, like, kind of, like, makes some biscuits on your leg a little bit and then goes back down. <laughs> and as you fawn over your victory over the flail snails and now the frog hemoth turned into normal frog, here is where we will end today's session. <laughs>